Hey, I am Mustafa Sharif. Thank you for listening or watching Urbanistica podcast. Today, I have the pleasure to have Atusa as a guest in Urbanistica podcast. There is a super interesting and important story that she gonna tell us that affecting the city and the community in Sweden. I'm honored to welcome you, Atusa, to Urbanistica podcast. Hello, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for giving your time and sharing your story and other people's stories as well. Absolutely. How are you doing, Atusa? I'm doing well. Uh, today is a sunny day in Malmo, so I'm trying my best to enjoy it and stay positive as much, especially in this uh, period of time uh, with a lot of things going on. Yeah. Yes, I, I can imagine it's not easy to stay home with the coronavirus time and the sun outside, especially for us here in Sweden. <laughs> Still there, there, there is much uh, you can do at home. So I'm trying to find things that I can do at home, basically. True, um, true. A recording a podcast is one activity as well. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's amazing. Well, Atusa, how would you like to, to present yourself? We would love to hear your story first, and then we, we scale it up to the movement that you started, the Jagar Photos and Femton, I am 2015. Uh, well, I am an artist uh, based in Malmö in Sweden, and I work uh, in uh, cultural institutions uh, uh, with different roles like uh, cultural uh, uh, project leader and the artistic director. Um, and uh, as an artist, my interest is uh, for politics, um, social issues and feminism. That is my basic focus right now in daily life. Um, so I myself personally, I'm not an activist. I never worked as an activist or I never worked with politicians and so on. And uh, I, I started something that uh, created a movement together with the help of people. And I'm very happy about it. Um, I... I work with the newcomers and refugees daily life at my works and my focus is based on integration in Sweden, how we can create network and help out people who are new in Sweden to create their own projects or be active in cultural and art projects. So that is my base, uh, that is basically my daily life. So by this, I meet a lot of people who are new in Sweden or still waiting to get their residence permit or challenging how they found their ways in, in the society because it's not easy. Even like for people who get residence permit, there is a lot to do to really melt into the like, uh, system and the society. Um, so that is why I have a lot of interest about uh, fight for their rights because I see how they are challenging every day. Uh, because, I mean, back in the times, in I can say 2015, Sweden was more open to people who are new in Sweden and welcoming, day, uh, welcoming them like in another way. But the, right now I see that that uh, welcoming image is kind of narrowing down. Uh, Unfortunately. Mm. And it's become more challenging and challenging for people to get a residence permit. Yeah. Mm. But uh, I'm interested also, like, are you born here or you were also coming 2015 as the movement? Uh, basically, I came to Sweden alone uh, without my family. Uh, I came uh, a little bit uh, earlier in the uh, 2014, but my refugee ca case and everything proceeded uh, in 2015. So I was visiting the migration office uh, a lot, so I could really get the big experience of how how was it looked like and how they treated people and also me. Uh, so I had a huge like I saw how Sweden looked like back in the days in 2015. Uh, so that is how I, I could uh, connect myself to this movement. And I wrote that I was very proud to, that I was a refugee in that uh, period in 2015. I came alone without my family. Uh, I, I am originally from Iran. I had uh, 
have very grounded uh, reasons to come here and uh, become as a refugee uh, to get protection by Sweden and I could like get uh, a new chance to start a new life. Yeah. Of course, that's that's also great that you went through all the process, so you understand the different details, the the, the good things and the, the the sad things in the process until you get your permission. So it's very, it's, I'm I'm very how to say it's big credit that you also were part of this story when you came here and also went through every single step. Yes, I could get uh, all of the uh, like experiences by being a refugee during that year. Uh, and that is how I can relate myself to that. Exactly. Yeah. For me, I was from 2010 from Iraq. And what I'm hearing like every year from like friends, people I met in the streets, it's getting harder and harder and like the process getting more complicated and so on. Yeah, back in the days, like you could uh, apply to get a permanent residence permit. This is one of the examples I can give you right now, that right now you can't get a permanent residence permit. It's basically three years and for some people one year. And after that, they're going to open your case again at Migration Office and decide again if whether you stay or not. Uh, so this is a one example I can say that uh, how things has been changed. Yeah, and I would love that uh, we we talk more about this topic and what like a newcomers can do and not can do in order like to work or get education. How did everything started? Like the movement you created. Um, well, on 2nd of March, I saw a picture from uh, one of the Swedish uh, politicians and uh, party leader, uh, Ulf Kristersson, that he shared the image of himself uh, on his Facebook, uh, that uh, it was uh, regarding to the situation right now in Turkey and Greece, uh, that uh, Sweden should uh, strengthen the uh, borders. And in the image, he was uh, crossing his uh, hands like this and uh, looking in the camera and saying, like, uh, the borders should be closed. And also, let's not let 2015 happen again in Sweden. It was written under the text. Okay. I think so many people reported that image, so it went, it took away, Facebook took it away, but uh, so many people reach out to that picture and share it. So I saw that picture on 2nd of March. And basically I felt very angry and sad how politicians like him, not only him, but politicians in Sweden always talk very negative about 2015 when Sweden uh, opened up the borders and welcoming many people. Um, so I got very angry and sad. So I decided to write a, a post, a Facebook post, basically, which was my personal answer to him uh, regard how he, uh, he answered or reacted to the situation in Turkey and Greece. So I said that I uh, proudly uh, announced that I was a refugee in 2015 and I'm currently working and paying tax I can speak Swedish fluently. I'm respecting all of the laws in Sweden. And I know many people who are like me. They are fighting and uh, trying so hard to become a part of this society. But politicians like you make it harder for us to feel like Sweden is our home. Uh, <clears throat> and I said that uh, it's been very wrong of Sweden how they portrayed refugees. Uh, because it couldn't uh, encourage other 27 uh, Europe countries to open up their borders or take responsibility for the situation in Turkey and Greece. If all of the countries in Europe open their borders or at least take responsibility for the situation which is happening in Greece and Turkey, there wouldn't be any crisis, there wouldn't be uh, any problem. Um, and I uh, used a quote from my grandmother uh, which she, I mean, she's gone, but she she used to say that it's easy to wake up someone who is sleeping, but it's harder to wake up someone who is pretending to sleep. And I feel like politicians in Sweden are like that, that they are pretending to be asleep. 
uh, and I, in the end of the message, I wrote that uh, I am 2015, whether you like or don't like it. And I know that so many are like me. And uh, I post this basically Facebook uh, post and I wrote in the first comment, please people send your uh, stories to me or share it and use the hashtag uh, you are two thousand femton or I am 2015. Uh, and uh, in few hours, the post went viral and engaged thousands. Like, I was very shocked at how it spread very quickly. Uh, in the beginning, it was many of my friends who shared it and, you know, writing comments. But after a few hours, it was like people that I, I have no idea uh, who they are. They were writing, sharing, and I was very fascinated. And then um, I... I reach out to some people uh, like sharing their stories with the hashtag and I was very impressed and I was super happy that this could uh, uh, like reach out to many people to share their stories and motivate them uh, to tell their stories because it's very important. Well, that's a really, it's, it sounds like it's a simple action, like you just wrote a Facebook post but then the impact of it was so big in a larger scale. And the people who reacted, were there just people from 2015 or even, let's say, the Swedes? It's both. Um, there has been a very diverse group, but basically who live in Sweden, uh, who reacted to this. Yeah. So I can say it's been both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the core of the movement, before you thought it's, it's going to be a movement, so it's more about the people from 2015 showing themselves how good they are, they are working, educating themselves, being paying taxes and just being like a normal citizen. Exactly. And I, I, I want to say this from my heart that everyone, regardless of the campaign, everyone has the right to get protection when it's needed. And this campaign is not about that if someone is working or having education has the right to get protection. This campaign is the only way to come for us as people to communicate with this politician who always talk very negative about uh, newcomers and refugees, that they are not good for the society or for economic and so on and so forth. Uh, so this campaign for me is not a, 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 like a communication to people, it's communication to people who are actually responsible to act, uh, to do something, especially uh, for people who are in a horrible situation in Turkey and Greece. Mm. So we want to show that we were proud of Sweden, what Sweden has done back in 2015, that welcoming people and you know helping out uh, people who are uh, coming as refugees. And also, show a positive uh, side of that for the country. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. I, I've, I'm sharing the same feelings and idea with you because when I came to 2010 to Sweden, Sweden is my now almost my first country. I, I'm, I got just a new life here. Now I'm working with urban planning and developing the society. I love Swedish people. Swedish communities are so great, but I'm so sad there are some politicians that just how to say, make the image so rude and just destroying everything that Sweden was building and the Swedish people were contributing with. So did you see any reaction from the responsible people, people in decision making? Not yet, actually. Um, so my plan was to uh, gather all of the stories together and physically go to the parliament uh, in Stockholm and leave all of these uh, stories both from migrants and also Swedish people uh, to the uh, elected politicians. And uh, they, they must read all of the stories and uh, have a discussion about it. But suddenly uh, things went a little bit slow because of the coronavirus situation uh, that uh, slowed down a bit of uh, the process of this. Uh, but I'm still fighting and I have gathered uh, more than 1,500 stories right now. And I'm trying to uh, get more and more stories. But sooner or later, when things get calm with coronavirus, 
I will do this and I want to physically go there and print all of the stories and hand, hand it to the elected politicians because this must uh, be done as soon as possible. Yeah. Yes, of course. Then that's very amazing. Like you started in March and now we are in April. It's just almost one month and so many stories you got and so many reaction. I see in the to be honest in, in the beginning it was my Swedish friend who told me oh did you see the 2015 campaign I'd be like well show me then I saw like it's so amazing so big movement so I'm I'm really happy that there's people in society like you going for action because it, during many years there's always some politician coming out and telling something against the newcomers people and so on and to be honest there was not someone standing in the front of their face and that's why we just keep having this kind of negative or speeches exactly and w what was i happy for was that uh, a reaction of me and not a staying silence to a person could uh, reach out to so many people and created movement and what i can add to that was that i didn't plan to create any movement it became a movement because of people because of their support, because they were brave enough to share their stories, to share uh, bravely like their stories to others officially and not staying silent because that's the problem right now. That uh, there is a thing in Sweden, we call it jantelagen. It's about like being in the norms or, you know, being um, accepting stereotypes and not sticking out. For me, this campaign was the best way to encourage people to stick out with their opinions about their experiences and not be afraid to share it with others and actually feel proud. You know, sometimes I've had met many people that they are ashamed of saying that I'm a refugee. Um, and I'm very sad of that because to be a refugee, uh, you need to be very strong and it's a lot to, to handle, to find your way, to start a new home, to learn a language, learn the rules and everything. It, it takes a lot of energy. And I believe that all of the refugees who are currently in Sweden or in Europe and so on, they are the most bravest people in the whole world, but also at the same time, the most vulnerable people that politicians always use as a tool to blame when things doesn't go well with other things. They blame them because something else doesn't go well. Yeah. Economics doesn't go well or whatever. They blame them, which they don't, uh, like they don't do anything, but they become a tool for many people with power to use them to, you know, get attention. Yeah. And that's they quite sad. Yeah, unfortunately, as you mentioned, like the when the system goes wrong, they just blame the powerless people, and that's worse every time because they're not they are powerless. They cannot really reach out and show how 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 good they are, and uh, that they are not the, the the part of the problem. Actually, maybe they are part of the solution. Exactly, exactly. You say that politician didn't show an official reaction or state. Is there any other? people that stand up with you and tell you oh you're doing so good this movement is great and we are supporting you or no one reached you i could reach out to so many people because of this campaign who are helping me voluntarily with this campaign because to be honest i don't work with politicians i don't get paid to work with this uh, so i can't do it alone i need actually people to stand behind my backs and, you know, help me out to reaching to more people and also gather stories. So I have reached out to a lot of like Swedish people and migrants and they help me everyday life to give me, to keep me up to date and help me out to reach to more and more people. And without them, without them, I couldn't be here and talking about the campaign or movement. And I'm very grateful. Of course, me too. I'm I'm very grateful. The approach is great, and it's about being together in this because it's in the end it's one society. And if we create a war in the society, who who go, who's going to win? Yes, exactly, exactly. We need each other to survive. And actually, the situation right now uh, that is happening in Greece and Turkey really scares me. 
because I don't want to be ashamed of this history in the future to tell to my story uh, to my grandchildren that what has happened in our history. I need. I think it's very important that we act and do something about it. It's very important. It is time. Uh, and I hope that more and more people be aware of this campaign, not only in Sweden, but also in, in Europe, to know about this campaign and join it and share their stories. I think it's very important that we get more and more people and this campaign doesn't get bubble, bubbled in Sweden. It's very important. Yes, of course. And I'm very grateful that you're recording the podcast now and especially in English. So more people can hear your voice and just feel it. Yes, we're going through the same, actually. Exactly. Yes. Atusa, can you tell us what are the different uh, challenges the newcomers people to Sweden? It's a lot of challenges, uh, basically, but uh, one of the biggest problems or issues is that I, I, with this campaign, I could reach out to so many people who came in 2015, but they still not be able to get residence permit. And they weren't lucky to, as like a person like me, to get residence permits or four last numbers to be able to work or go to SFE where you learn Swedish language. But they were, they from other ways try to learn the language and find jobs, but they still, it's so hard to keep up. Uh, with the society and the system. Uh, and also, there is many people also coming new to Sweden and they are waiting for such a long time to even get the first interview with Migration Office. And they're not uh, like uh, before. The process is more longer. Three years is a normal uh, period for getting like residence permit or basically an answer from migration office. So imagine three years of waiting and not be able to find job or, you know, to do anything. It's, yeah, it's just like uh, being freezed, freezing and not doing anything in your life. Exactly, because you need... So I give you a, a very... A, a, an example from my life. I found a job before I get my residence permit uh, and it is very hard to open a bank account without having a ID card or four last numbers. So basically I had a contract and I had my tax number. I had everything ready. I went to the bank and they said, you can't open a bank account. And you know, it's so hard nowadays to get paid without having a bank account. But I was lucky that the place that I started work at, they found another, another way to pay me. But not all of the places are like that. Some places would give up on giving you a job because you, you, you don't have a bank account. So what I'm saying is it's getting more harder and harder for people who come in with a big talent, uh, big resumes, like they want really get into the system. They want to work, they want to study, they want to uh, integrate to really do that because of the four last numbers, because how they get treated by the immigration office in Sweden. So their talent, their uh, energy just uh, decrease. And basically after three years, you get a mentally breakdown. Like three years, it's such a long time to yeah. wait. Yeah. To yeah. be honest, I, I met so many people as well, like with a, with a great experience and talent. And as you mentioned, the system making it so hard to, for them to, to even get a, a job or because they are not really official or able to, to, to get like paid or, and so on. So and as you mentioned, they, their, their talent and everything just like disappears because th there is no point. They, they cannot use it here. And mm -hmm. some people, they just get this uh, psychological situation, they'd be like, okay, maybe I should stay at home and just die there because here I'm dying a life. And for me, it's so sad to hear that because we are here in Sweden, like this very well-developed country, so many opportunities. And then you hear these stories, you're getting like really negative feeling. I'm so sad about this. Yes, and the most vulnerable people right now in the society is people without papers. The people actually who get negative answer from migration office and live uh, uh, without papers in Sweden. So basically you don't have any rights. Uh, 
yeah. in the society. So anything happened to you with discrimination, healthcare, a lot of like supports are are gonna be vanished from your life, and you need to survive. And it's very horrible. Yeah. And I meet them basically every day. And it's so sad because I, as an individual person, cannot help. But uh, I hope that this campaign would also take their stories to the politicians because also they are a group of vulnerable people uh, in Sweden or I think there are many in Europe that they still are challenging to get uh, basic rights. Yes, of course. And I can imagine the, from the side of, uh, from the point of view of migration office, it might be so many cases so they don't have time. But at the same time, I understand like you can just have more resources to check through the cases. Did you reach out to migration officials? Did they say something about making the process easier and so people can get the official, what do you call it, tax number or? No, actually it's becoming harder and harder. Uh, at my work, we are trying to sometimes, if there is any job opportunity, we give it to people who are refugees. And it's a very long process, I can say. It's a very long process that as a person who's, who is given a job, you get very uh, like uh, exhausted. It's a very long process, both for a person who is looking for a job to actually found a job, and then how to, to make it official is also another process. Yeah. So it's kind of impossible. So mm. I, I feel like this is the only way for them to make it harder for people to find their way and, you know. Yeah, yeah. Establish themselves. Yes. If, if, if like, I ask you, what should the Swedish government do in order to fix all of this? Do you have, like, a kind of recipe, do one, two, three, like, steps? Or would you suggest the, the Swedish government to act? I want the Swedish politicians, the elected politicians, to listen to the people because we are part of this uh, country and this society. And it's very important. That is, uh, we call it democracy, that we would be heard by politicians, that they hear our voices. And it's very important. I urge people right now in Sweden to not take democracy for guarantee. It's very important that you always communicate with the elected politicians and they hear your voice. So the first step for me is that they read all of the stories and uh, the, all of them, not only one party leader. The campaign is started by my personal message to one person who is a politician. But I want to take all of these stories to all of the uh, parties in Sweden to read them and take some responsibility for the situation uh, which is happening in Turkey and Greece and also for people who are without papers living in Sweden to take some responsibilities and also to encourage other countries in Europe to do the same thing because we live together and everyone should take responsibility then things wouldn't be uh, hard I believe if all of the 27 uh, Europe countries take responsibility for the situation which is happening. It wouldn't be any crisis and it wouldn't be hard. Uh, but I I want them to take responsibility because to be honest, I am I don't work as a politician. It's not my responsibility to 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 answer this. It's their responsibility. And Sweden should stop talking very negative way about migrants. That's very important. That's the first step to open up a com uh, like a discussion with other countries. It's very important that they say, oh, migrants and refugees has done this many positive things for our country. And I'm urging all people who, who are scientists or working as a researchers to join this campaign and help me with more facts. Uh, so we can use this with this campaign to show that refugees hasn't been that negative for the country and the system. Yeah, and what else could the people do, especially the newcomers people, in order to let their voice heard by politicians? Um, I urge everyone to use uh, the same hashtag, Yog uh, Art 2015 or I am 2015, and share their stories officially in social medias. 
and uh, to to give uh, information to other people about this campaign. Like, as you said, you heard from your friend about this campaign, right? And I think it's very important that if we know about something, we also help out uh, to spread it to others. Uh, so I, I would uh, like to ask people to uh, to tell each other about this campaign, not only in Sweden, in whole Europe, to acknowledge each other and share their stories and don't feel like their stories is not good enough. All of the stories, all of the voices matters to us. Yeah. And it's not about that you must have came to Sweden or Europe in 2015. It's about that you, you have a knowledge about what has happened back in 2015 and how like yeah, what's the situation and how is it now and write your experience and your stories because for me and many other people their stories and their voices are very important yeah so every single person can be part of this movement and just push forward yes exactly everyone not only because some people misunderstood the campaign that you, you should have been like a migrant or refugee to join this campaign, but it's not true. Yeah. You are as a person who lived in Sweden and for a long time or Swedish, you can also share your story, how you felt, how Sweden was in 2015. Mm. Mm. Because so many people were proud of Sweden and so many people actually went, for example, in Malmo, People went to the central station with uh, food and with uh, like uh, things to like welcoming people. There was actually a big uh, uh, like a poster in the station that it was written in four different languages. And it says, if you are a refugee, you are welcome to Malmo. Yeah, I miss I, that. Yeah. And to, to uh, same here, to be honest, this for me, Sweden is this, this welcoming society and country. Yes, and I miss that. And I, I hope that I know that so many people also miss that. And I hope that people would uh, share how they feel right now. It's important that we share our stories. Yeah. And right now we need that. We need voices. Of course, it's a very good point that you mentioned now that everyone can be part of it. Because to be honest, when I saw it, for me, I was I was a refugee as well from from 2010, and when I saw when I saw 2015, I'd be like, should I can I publish my story because I'm not really from 2015. So I'm very grateful that you make the image clear now and that everyone could just be part of it because we are human. Yes, exactly, and we need to also uh, acknowledge others and motivate others also to join and share their stories. It's not about uh, we we should see this campaign uh, not uh, as a for migrants. We need all of us together as one voice, right? Of course, yes, of course. That's how we make the change. If we all together in this, do you do you think that you're gonna have a big demonstration in the future, like make it more official and just go outside and gathering people in the street? Of course, after coronavirus and so on. Um. If uh, well, we we right now there are uh, people behind my back and as volunteers, and I mean I live in Malmo, which uh, I I have my own network around me. But it would be great to meet others who are living in other cities and uh, find possibilities to meet people and talk to them face to face. So I hope that we would we would manage to do something in the future to meet and uh, you know plan things together yeah. and hopefully when things get to calm down with the coronavirus we would uh, plan to do that mm -hmm. and uh, also there every story that has a different side like a dark side and so on i when i went to the facebook i see like there are so many different groups actually and there's one very big group of people like a facebook group more i think more than uh, 50,000 uh, member in this group but it's not the official one, but still it's part of the movement. So what, what uh, what's your thoughts and reflection about like there being different many groups and different people telling that oh, I, I am the one who created this, I am the one who did this. What, what do you think? Um, well, in the, in the beginning, I was, uh, 
I was a bit, uh, what do you say, confused that why there is many pages and groups are created by people that I have no idea and they are sharing stories and so on. Um, so I was a bit confused and I, I, I really tried to collaborate with some, um, but uh, it didn't end to somewhere as a collaboration, but still I'm very happy that this campaign uh, could inspire many people to open pages and groups and uh, kind of in other way helping this campaign to grow. Um, but to be honest, I think it's very important that uh, each groups and each pages encourage people to use same hashtags and also encourage people to share their uh, posts officially because if we want to reach out to people, we need to uh, not bubble ourselves in only one group. It's important that we share our stories in our Facebook uh, officially with same hashtags. I, I've seen people creating new hashtags or new names. I think it's very important that we keep the same name if we want to go somewhere. But in another way, I'm very glad that this uh, could inspire and uh, motivate many to make uh, pages and um, yeah groups in Facebook. But right now we have a group uh, in Facebook, uh, we call it uh, I Am 2015 uh, um, People's Movement and we have uh, 2,000 2, members right now currently, but our aim is how we can develop this movement. It's not about people sharing their stories, it's about how we can go forward with this movement because in one way, okay, everyone is sharing their stories, but then what is the next step? So in this group, we are uh, working on how we can um, have more structures with this campaign, how we can develop, how we can reach out to more and more people and where this campaign should go. Exactly, yeah. because this is my next question. What is the next step? Like, are you making it, official association or do you have any thoughts now together with the with the community well basically right now we we are keeping it as a we call this uh, as a people's movement because to be honest this uh, uh, campaign without people without the help of uh, many people never became a campaign so we call it uh, like a people's movement and our focus right now is how we can reach out to, to other countries, for example, uh, Germany, because Germany also accepted many refugees back in 2015, like Sweden, how we can reach out to them, how we can get their stories, how we can uh, uh, reach to people who, who can help us uh, spread the world. Uh, so we are right now basically working on how we can make this more internationally. So it becomes a bigger discussion for countries. Yeah, yeah. it's more about the, um, the external communication. Yes, exactly. The, the, the priority of the next step. Yes, yeah. yes. Wonderful. Um, I'm working with urban planning and with the societies and city development. And for us, it's that to create the, the perfect city for the citizens and make it accessible and uh, beautiful. If I might ask you what is uh, the future city for you or how does like we call it a smart city? What is a smart city for you? Um, I can give you an example of what has happened in Malmo, a beautiful city of Malmo, which is diverse. So, uh, I actually live um, close by uh, Molevantoriet. It's a uh, it's a place that you, you can see a very blended, diverse of people together. When I just walk there, I feel like home. The smell, the people, different languages, uh, different colors. It's fantastic. But I hope that this blended people would also blend on the whole city. What I am very sad is uh, people bubbleize in uh, special areas, and uh, and for people it's also so hard to move around. Uh, in Malmo, basically, right now you can't have a, a yo-yo card if you don't have a bank account. 
uh, back hey, in you, the day. You, just to be clear, a UU card is a bus card, right? Or public transportation card. Yes. Yeah. And uh, well, in uh, Malmo, they have decided to take that away. If uh, and you need to have more official bus cards or cards to you to be able to uh, transfer in the city. And uh, so many people who are new in Sweden, and as I said before, they have a hard time to open a bank account. They're not officially here. And it's been very challenging for us to find solution with that, how we can encourage newcomers to move around in the city because they need to uh, find networks, meet people, and this may end to a better city when we actually meet each other. Um, in social medias and news, they have another image of people. And I believe that where you can see the real people and actually physically, world um, but somehow it's become very hard for people to move around so for me a dream city would be like people have a free access to transfer to to move around could reach out to places you don't need to be a, a special class of the of the economy to be able to do that everyone would have a right to move around the city which is actually we are uh, we have a lack of that in Malmo and what else I would would be dream for me is that uh, the city would be a place that people uh, could reach out to each other, uh, different people, because I think so many misunderstandings happen when we don't meet each other, when we don't uh, start to know each other, not only between uh, migrants or Swedish people, but also migrants and migrants. It's it's some it, it's a something that I think is. It would create the city more beautiful that uh, people can move around and start their own business in like different part yeah. of the city. Because right now in Malmo, there is a special areas that migrants have their own business or start their own restaurants or um, what do you say, um, markets. I hope that in the future people can spread that. Like you could go, you know, some other areas which is only for. Swedish or high class people and you can start your business there or you can, you know, um, move around. Yeah. That's, uh, that would be dream for me. Well, wow. so it's very interesting point of view that smart city for you is more about opening communities to each other so they can exchange their culture, their thoughts and reflection and also make the different areas accessible to every single person that you don't need to have the, to be rich to get the, the trans public transportation because it's, Actually, it's funny because it's called public transportation and not really public public, you know. Yeah, it's, it's also crazy. Yes. Well, it was a great message for especially for me as an urban planner and trying my best to create the future cities. Now I will not take so much of your time. I, we have the, to arrive to the end of the, the episode. I have three last question. What is the next step for you, Atusa, as a person? For me, the next step is to learn uh, from the history, to, to always uh, open my eyes about what's going on around me and around the world and use uh, different situations uh, as, a, as a possibility to learn, uh, to learn and uh, to, to not let the same mistake happen again. Uh, and I hope that uh, I, this, um, this uh, movement that uh, started by, like, by a Facebook post and they become a bigger movement would encourage people uh, around me or others to not stay silent, to not feel that you are too small to make a movement, as Greta says. Um, that is very important that to not feel that you are so little to make a movement you are so little to make a change. And I'm so grateful that, that I could experience that. And this, this has changed me a lot, actually. And I could learn a lot uh, because of this campaign, by reading people's voices. And I, for next step for Atusa is to be conscious, uh, to not be silenced, and to keep fighting for the democracy and for rights for people and everyone has the right to get, uh, get protection. Yes. And uh, 
three takeaway messages and three hashtags? <laughs> three hashtags. Uh, I would rather to say I am 2015, uh, also in Swedish, Jag är 2015. Uh, and in Farsi, hashtag Mando Hazar Punzaya. Great, great. <laughs> and the three takeaway messages. But hopefully, can you, say it, can you say it in Arabic? Anna Alfiano Hamstash. That's so beautiful. Thank you. So, three takeaway messages, and hopefully, keep this in English. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, messages. Um, your voice is important. You you always need to be heard by elected politicians and don't stay silent. We need to act together. Very inspirational. Thank you so much for giving your time and for speaking about the movement and continue working hard to spread people's stories and letting the government hear them. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, I'm I'm very happy to to talk to you. Thank you, and hopefully in the future maybe we can uh, have another episode talking about the development of the movement in in some uh, days or weeks. It depends, but uh, I wish you all the good luck with everything you do, and thank you so much again. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for listening to this episode. And I'm really encouraging you to be part of this movement because, again, my reflection is I'm, I feel very sad that these things happen in Sweden, like, because this is not the true of the Swedish society. All my friends, like the Swedish friends and so on, so great people, so wonderful. And again, this is not the image of Sweden. So let's we should really show the real image of the Swedish society and Sweden as a country, because it's a lovely country. Thank you so much for listening. Follow in Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. I am Mustafa Sharif. Have a good life.